Hello. My name is Josiah. I had never met him until that day. I had never been introduced to him. My son had seen him. Zacharias had seen him before. In the temple courtyards. Teaching to his disciples, but I had never met him. I had heard the stories about him. I had heard the stories about how this Jesus of Nazareth was a man of God. But I had never met him. Not until that day. And there were stories. There was a man once who came into my shop. He was looking for things. He was from Capernaum. He had told me that he had been in a wedding one time at Cana. And that this Jesus of Nazareth, that they had ran out of wine and that he had taken water jugs and that he had prayed over them. And when the servants went to pour the water out, it had turned to wine. To wine. What man can turn water into wine? I thought the man from Capernaum had had too much wine. When I heard the stories of this Jesus of Nazareth. There were some Roman soldiers one day. They were in my shop. Picking up some crosses. I make them for the Romans. A man must do what a man must do. They were telling me a story about a centurion who had come to this Galilean looking for help for his daughter, looking for healing. And I thought to myself then, who is man? What kind of power must he possess if a Roman soldier would come to him for help? A centurion. I still cannot believe the stories. I didn't believe them. I didn't believe the stories of the women because, well, the women have a tendency to tell tall tales. <laughs> Just as the fishermen. One woman came and told a story about how Jesus was dining at a Pharisee's house by the name of Simon. And how she had gone and broke an alabaster jar and pour it upon him. A year's worth of wages. What kind of fool would waste a year's worth of wages? I didn't believe them stories. I didn't believe them at all. Some, they came in and they talked to him. They talk about this Jesus of Nazareth, this Jesus, the son of Joseph, the Nazarene. They said he was a prophet. They said he was like Elijah or Isaiah. I could not believe them. What man can walk on water? Foolishness. It is foolishness, I told them then. And I wish I could say it now. I am a simple man. I don't believe tall tales. And the Pharisees 
and the Sadducees. They would talk about this Jesus of Nazareth and they would say that he does his miracles because of the work of the dark one, Beelzebub. That seemed even foolish to me than the tales that were being told. Why would the devil allow a man to perform miracles that makes God look good, I said to myself. They were bigger fools to me than those who believed the stories. Jesus of Nazareth. That's what I thought. I could not imagine that he was the Messiah. They said he was. They said that he was the chosen one. They said that he was the chosen one of God. He was the savior that we have been looking for. That my father pined his life away for. Waiting and waiting. And there were others who said they were the Messiah as well. And they came claiming that they were the chosen ones of God. And every one of them ended up on one of these. And every one of them, they recounted what they had said about Rome and about Caesar before they died. They were not the chosen ones. So when I heard the tales of this Jesus of Nazareth and how he would be the chosen one. <laughs> but then one day I heard a story that Jesus had raised a man from the dead. He was in Bethany. What, what man can raise a man from the dead? the dead only God has power over death I thought to myself and so I went I was like the others so I went there to Bethany and I could not find him so I went that day to Jericho where I had heard him and his disciples were there were many crowds that day. Lots were gathering for the feast of Passover. The streets were packed and so were the shops. And I found him and his disciples. And there were already large crowds that were gathering there that day around him. And they were talking of his miracles and they were talking about how he was the chosen one, the son of God. And the Pharisees and some of the scribes, they, they, they were mocking him with some of their questions and they would say things like this to him. They would say, Rabbi, tell us about the kingdom of God. But the way that he spoke about it, he spoke with such wisdom and authority. He spoke as if the way a man speaks about his children that he has been far from for a long time. He spoke about a man, the way a man speaks about his home. I had never heard anything like it. He was so meek and so humble, and yet he spoke with such authority to these teachers of the law. And the large crowds, they were, they were gathering that day. They were swelling up around him. I could hardly even get to him that day. And as we were coming out of the gates of Jericho, as we were coming out of the city of Jericho, there was a blind man. He has been blind since birth. 
His name was Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was a beggar. He sat at the city gates, and as he heard the crowds coming by, and as he heard Jesus coming by, he said to him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And some of the crowd there, the disciples gathered around him. They told him to be quiet. They said, shh, Bartimaeus, don't trouble the master. And they rebuked him. But that just made Bartimaeus scream even more. Jesus, son of Nazareth, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. He told his disciples to come to him. He told them to bring Bartimaeus to him. And I could not hear what Jesus had said to him, but I did hear Bartimaeus yell, I want to see. And Jesus, this carpenter's son, he laid his hands upon Bartimaeus and he prayed upon him. And the next thing I heard was Bartimaeus saying, I can see. I can see. And Bartimaeus started dancing. And he started, he started jumping around. And he started singing praises to God. Suck all the while while suckering this Jesus of Nazareth. And all of the people started to sing praises to Jesus. And sang Hosanna on the highest. And Bartimaeus danced around him. And he said, Wee! I can see! Wee! I can see! Jesus, just like you, he started to laugh. Oh, his laughter. <laughs> I wish you could have heard it. And everyone, they started to sing songs and praises to him. And there, as we walked down the Damascus Road, as we left Jericho that day, there was a large crowd, and they kept singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the God of highest praise to the Lord of our God. And as we circled around the road to Damascus that day, there was Nazareth. I had never quite seen the city look like that. I know I'd walked that road many days, but I had never seen it look quite like that. And they sang praises to him and they shouted, Jesus, son of Nazareth, Jesus, this son of Joseph. Hosanna to the God on high. It was like a celebration. And some men, that they said that they were Jesus' disciples. Some of them, they brought him a colt. And they placed him upon it. And as we entered into the gates of Jerusalem that day, the children started to sing, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he from our God of Yahweh. They sing praises to him and the crowds, they grew so large and they swelled up so, so, to, to, to so many. I couldn't get, I couldn't get close enough to him. I wish I would have pushed through the crowds that day. I wish I would have just touched the hem of his robe. I wish I would have just shook his hand. But as they went through the city of Jerusalem that day, I lost him. 
I lost him amongst the crowd. And I didn't see him anymore. Until that day. Until that that fateful day. There he was again, but he did not resemble the man that I had seen just a couple of days earlier. He was bloodied and beaten. And the Roman soldiers, they had placed a crown of thorn upon his head. He was not the same meek, humble man upon a colt anymore. They were kicking him. And they were spitting upon him. They had beaten him. He was so bloodied. His body had been ravaged by the Roman whip. And the the same people that had been crying out his praises, they were now jeering him. They were mocking him. They were making fun of him. All that the Roman soldiers and at Jesus' expense. They carried him through the streets that day. And then, that's when I saw it. They had strapped a cross upon his back. It was one of my crosses. He had my cross strapped upon his back. The very cross that I had forged with my own two hands. Why did they use my cross, I said. Why were they choosing to kill him with something that I had designed? They took him out of the street that day. They took him out to the city gates to a place called Golgotha, a place of the skull. And there they crucified him. And Caiaphas, the high priest, and the other Pharisees of the high council, they sat around and they mocked him and they jeered him and they said, if you are the Son of God, then come down off of that cross. And they hung him there with two other thieves. One of them I heard, he cried out to Jesus, begged for forgiveness and Jesus forgave him what man can forgive of sins I said to myself what man would die for another this was just no man I changed my mind about him that day I wish I would have done more. I I wish that I would have protested. I wish I would have said something. Why could he, why could I have not sacrificed my life for him? Why could I have not given my life? Why did I not say something for him? Why did I not do more?
I realize now he truly was the Son of God. to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when the stone was rolled away? Were you there when the stone was rolled away? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the stone was rolled away? In Max Lucado's book, The Day the Angels Went Silent, Lucado says this. He says, make no mistake about it. It wasn't a miscalculation on Jesus' part. It wasn't a last-ditch attempt to salvage some type of strange mission. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't even an injustice. Jesus came into Jerusalem that day with a purpose and with a plan. And that started not in Jericho, not in Nazareth, not even in Bethlehem. It started when you could still hear the echoing of the crunching of the fruit in the garden of Eden. 
Jesus was bound for the cross. For you and for me. He came into Jerusalem that day with a purpose. And that was you and it was me. And this today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to respond to the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to stop right here and we're just going to pray. And you can, you can do this in the comfort of your seat. If you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you just ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to be the authority of your life. Please join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray and I sense that there are some out here that do not know you as Savior. So my prayer today would be that they would follow this prayer. That they would just say, Jesus Christ, please be the Lord of my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart with your Holy Spirit. Please, please guide my life from this day forward. Be the authority in my life and let my life be a blessing to you. It's just that simple. Father, my prayer for those that have come to know Christ as Savior is that we would meditate on the events that happened this week. That they would really begin to impact us as Christians, enough that it draws us to action, that it propels us intentionally to love a world that desperately needs to see and know the love of Christ. Father, thank you for the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you for on that day so long ago that Jesus did come. He came into Jerusalem with the cross on his mind and all of mankind on it as well. Father, thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I pray that all that would leave here today would leave here with hearts that are pure before God. And that you would go in the grace and in the mercy and in the peace of God. And may that peace of God go with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.